It will be 40 years ago tomorrow when the village of Farwell was thrust into the national news because of the murderous actions of one man. Robert Lee Haggard slaughtered the family of his soon-to-be ex-wife, gunning them down as they arrived at the home of her parents. Seven died, including his estranged wife. Haggard was caught, tried, and convicted, eventually dying in prison. Tonight, TV5's Blake Keller goes into our archives and speaks with those who dealt with the killer firsthand. The village of Farwell in the southwest portion of Clare County is home to nearly 8,000 people. Considered where the north begins, but it can also be considered where Michigan's third largest mass murder took place. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report from News 5. It may be the most senseless tragedy to have ever hit Clare County, Michigan. At least six people have been killed in uh, Clare County. The road leading to the home of Mr. and Mrs. George Post was cordoned off throughout the night. Near dawn, the gruesome story began to unfold. Here in a house in Surrey Township near the village of Lake, seven people had been shot to death around 6 o'clock last night. Three of them were only children between the ages of 4 and 10. Couldn't believe it. You know, how could something like that happen in a little town? The killing of seven members of the Post family on Rock Road started with a multi-state manhunt. Good evening, everyone. A manhunt is underway. Just two days went by before main suspect Robert Lee Haggard was arrested. Good evening. News 5 has learned that authorities have arrested Robert Haggard. He was reportedly picked up in Tennessee. And when people around Farwell heard the news that Robert Haggard had been arrested, some reacted with relief and some with rage. It ended with a prominent court case in Midland County. Norm Donker was on the prosecution team. We've got everything evidentiary that we possibly want in this case with the exception of a confession. They were holding out for Haggard's confession. If you looked at Haggard, you know, there, there are some people who say, oh, that's, that's a murderer. Robert Lee Haggard was convicted of murdering his wife, Garnetta, her parents, George and Vondry, her stepsister, Helen Gaffney, and her three kids, Angela, Tom, and Amy. Records show only one baby survived, shielded by her mother. Now, we made Freedom of Information Act requests for those police records, and they show Robert Haggard and his wife, Garnetta, set for divorce court the day after the murders. I guess it's a... Uh... Unfortunate that the, the Haggard murders occur, and uh, I think Mr. Haggard was trying to get rid of witnesses. That's John Ringelberg. He authored Clare County Murders, but also played a role in Haggard's case. I was the, the district judge that conduct, conducted the uh, preliminary examination for uh, Mr. Haggard. I would describe him as fairly stoic, uh, not showing much emotion at all. Void of emotion in court, Donker says this case was all fact-based. There was certainly a different aura to it. So it was really just having the jury accept the fact that people are capable of that kind of evil. And a lot of security around, uh, more than probably ever. It was it was kind of tense for the for the uh, court system. Around 60 plus witnesses took the stand, even those who saw Haggard when he left the state. When Haggard was fleeing from Clare County down to Tennessee, he went through Louisville, Kentucky, and there was a guy that was dumpster diving in the back of a Kentucky Fried Chicken and found Mrs. Post's purse. And this detective from Louisville came up, and he was, he was the epitome of professionalism. He, you know, at this point in time, you know, right at this date, at this time, here's what I did, here's the purse, here's the contents. Lucky, lucky fluke. And that, that helped show, show Hager with the uh, possessions of, of the victim. Several days of jury deliberations ended in a guilty conviction for Haggard. That quiet, that tense, um, I remember the, the jury foreman, the hands were shaking when they read the verdict. There is no more severe sentence in the state of Michigan than what he got. He would spend time at Ken Ross Correctional Facility in the UP. Dave McMillan was a corrections officer there. He was on the floor that I was I was working every day. The two got close. I don't know why, but just out of the blue, I said to him, how could you do it, Bobby? And he said, do what, Mac? And he's laughing. I said, how could you kill the kids? And he looked kind of stunned and waited for a second. He said, the ball was rolling and I couldn't stop it. 
And I said, you mean you couldn't leave any witnesses alive that could speak? And he says, yeah. McMillan got more insight into Haggard than most people ever got. The way I used to describe a lot of guys that I met in prison would describe Bobby. He thought he was slick. Haggard served a life sentence until his death in 2003, but the details of this case still stick with those familiar. The only part of that case that I still have dreams about is what that family went through and they knew he was going to come and kill him. And the, for those kids to go through that, uh, that's a bad thought. In Clare County, I'm Blake Keller, WNEM TV5. Haggard apparently had a felonious background before committing the murders. We delve into other crimes he's suspected of committing Thursday at 11.